hi guys hello guys so welcome back thank you so much for clicking hope you guys are doing great what do you do when someone insults prophet muhammad yes there's another question here uh, this is related to the hadith of ali radiallahu in the battlefield how do we remain steadfast in the face of our enemy whom openly mocked our prophet wasallam? this question is from a sister Okay, uh, that's a very good question. What do we do when somebody insults our Prophet ﷺ? The first time it happened to me, I was at George Mason University giving a speech. After the speech, one came up to me. He's not Muslim. He was an old man, actually. And he, was, he knows Arabic. And he came in my face. And he said, what do you say about a 53-year-old man that has sex with a 6-year-old girl? Whoa, when he said this, I almost passed out because I couldn't believe anybody would talk like this. I couldn't believe somebody would say something like this. I knew what he meant by what he said. I was so upset. I started taking my coat off. And I would give it to the sheikh who was with me. I said, you know, just hold my coat. <laughs> I'm going to go on this guy. And as I was taking my coat off, I looked at him. I said, this depends on your question. If it's a rhetorical question or if you're insulting my prophet, in which case I'm going to take you out back and beat your head off your shoulders. He said, no, 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 it's rhetorical. I said, in this case, it doesn't need an answer. Obviously, what he said, no Muslim would support this idea. Because our Prophet never would do something like this. Our Prophet did not do what this man said. But the way he said it, people would think, ah, oh, this is Muhammad. Ah. Our Prophet was the example for us. And he was the mercy to mankind. I had to go to the scholars and ask them, how do I answer the question? They said, first of all, you don't get angry. This is in the Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La tagdab. Somebody said, give me nasiha. La tagdab. And then, la tagdab, la tagdab. Don't get angry. Take it easy. Keep your cool. Take it easy. Second thing is, when you don't know, just say, I don't know. But be kind to them. Maybe they will listen to the answer. So the next time, I saw the same guy again. I'm ready. This time, he started with another question. It's nothing but an insult, the way he said it. But this time, I said, thank you for asking me about my religion. He went, huh? Yeah, he didn't he expect that. that. Reaction. He yeah, thinks I'm going to get angry. Provoked. Not now. I know we shouldn't do that. Thank you for asking me about my religion. And then, say this. As a Muslim, I cannot lie. As a Muslim, I cannot lie. If I lie, I can go to hell. And if I don't tell the truth, if I make a mistake, you can check it out anyway because everything in Islam is preserved 100%. Mia Mia, the Quran and the Sunnah, we still have it today as we had it centuries ago. So it's there. So it's easy, we can find the answer. But by the way, and here it comes, are you listening? If, while you are listening to my answer, you like the answer so much that you say, that's better than what I have, are you gonna be ready to make a move to something better? He said, yeah. And then I began to give the answer. First of all, the Hadiths are in Bukhari, and it's two, one, it says Aisha is six years old and her mother, listen to the hadith, her mother comes to her and takes her into the house. She's playing in the dirt. Her mother takes her into the house to her father. So far, did you hear the word sex in there? No. And her father is doing a tradition which is a part of the Arab tradition forever. He's offering his daughter in marriage to his best friend Someone who is a leader, someone who is very important to him, and he's saying, I want you to marry my daughter. Hmm? But then what? She's back outside playing in the dirt. Yes or no? Yeah. Where did you hear sex in there? I think you've been standing in the checkout line of the grocery store too long looking at the tabloids with that word S-E-X on it. Oh, 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 that's all you're thinking about. This is not our prophet, so long. The other hadith, she's older. The mother's taken to the father. The father's often her in marriage. And 
Look what it said in the Quran in chapter 4, verse 19. Very clear, it tells, O oh, you who believe, you cannot inherit women against their will. And in order for a woman to get married, she has to be old enough to know what's going yeah. on and understand That's it sure. and old enough to have children. Yeah, otherwise, she can't get married. It's not a legal marriage in Islam. Yes or no? So what do you think? It gives us the example that even though she was betrothed at an early age, mm -hmm. they didn't get married old until enough. she was old enough. The man standing there going, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It happened again when I was in Chennai, the same subject come up and I told another one the same way. He said, really? I said, yes, but I'm going to ask you a question. Everything we know about their marriage is coming to us from her. Read what she said and think out of 2,200 sayings or hadith from her, roughly 26, 2,200, she is saying only what? The best things about her husband. Muhammad Sallallahu Yes or no? And all that she said again and again, she's praising him, loving him, caring about him. She talks about when she was young, she used to race with him and she used to beat him. She said, I got older, I got heavy, and then he used to beat me in the races. She used to tease him, she played tricks on him. We know from the Quran some tricks that she played. Whoa, watch out. But still, he was a very caring and oh, loving God. husband to her. So much so when he died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wanted her to be there. He died right there in that house with his head in her lap. And what was the last thing she did? She used a tooth stick and she cleaned it for him and opened it up and put it in his mouth because she knew how much he liked it. And in this way and in this condition, he passed away. And for the rest of her life, she narrated from him and never said a single bad word ever about her husband. Do you know any women today who could go their whole life and never say something bad about their husband? Hello? Do you know a woman who can go even one year or one month or one week? Maybe not even one day and she's saying something about her husband. Well, she's not supposed to. Aisha radiallahu anha never said a single bad word on her husband. Yes or no. And she never even considered to look at another man for the rest of her life. In her heart and in her mind, she is still married to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they will be together in Jannah. In Jannah, in the paradise. And live there happily ever after. I'm asking you a simple question. Is this the best love story you ever heard? Or do you like the story of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet on Valentine's Day, huh? Talking about, oh, what a love story. Romeo and Juliet, two young lovers, one a preteen, maybe 12 and one 14, something like this, very young from two separate tribes that did not like each other. They hated each other, they were fighting. So the Capulets on the one side and the other family on the other side and they hate each other and they don't want their children to even know each other so they sneak behind their back. Did they get married? No. What did they do? I don't want to mention. And then what? One of them commits suicide and then the other one commits suicide. According to the Jewish religion, Christian religion and Islam, they go to hell. Compare that to the story of Muhammad and Aisha and tell me what you think is really the story of romance. And he said, Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. MashaAllah. Just remember this, no matter how harsh the questions come, you have a responsibility to present Islam in the best way. Don't try to be Ahmed Didat or don't try to be Zachar Naik. Don't try to be Yusuf Asis. Be you. Be yourself as the best Muslim you can be. Wallahi. And I don't like to say Wallahi because I'm not Arab anyway. But when I say this, I really mean I wish all of us would just use what Allah gave us and be the best Muslim you can be. This would destroy shaitan on this planet. He wouldn't have a chance. May Allah guide us. I mean. Wow, that was a beautiful way to answer the question.
you know when you when somebody try to provoke you eh there's a better way to answer the person if you answer back with hunger you are going to destroy so many things and you're going to portray a lot of negative things about you and if it's maybe the the the, the topic that caused the promotion prov was is about islam they are going to you know it's also about your religion so it's just like you're trying to give a different light about yourself and about your religion so this person asks that what do you do when someone insults prophet Muhammad? because of what you know we've heard that prophet Muhammad did a lot of you know like some people say i don't know they said some or some non muslim always say that Anytime they listen or uh, try to read the story of Prophet Muhammad, they notice I did a lot of atrocity, marrying a young lady, you know, going to war, killing people, and the rest get. I don't know. That's what I heard people always say. So he said, if a situation like that arises, that at first, when somebody provoked, the, provoked him by saying, Oh, Prophet, your prophet, how can he marry a six years old child? Is, it, is she six or nine then? Six years old child. That eh, this is it. That what kind of you know, just like child abuse. At that point, he was angry, he was angry. But at the same time, he he, he react. He wanted to react, but he calmed himself down. Then another time came in which he he spoke to the person with wisdom. We need to use wisdom to undo some cases. We need is wisdom to undo some things in life. Don't be too quick to react no be careful no slow to be slow to speak be quick to listen take your time to listen to what the person say to what the person says you might get a point that you can put out you get it anything anybody say whether it makes sense or not you can use that one one for your own benefit or for you to tackle the person's point of view and give your own reason so that's why it's good to pay attention to whatever someone say. And even when you're angry, just remain calm. Remain calm. And listen quickly. Listen carefully. Then after listening, you cannot talk. So when uh, Sheikh Yusuf Etis now told the man that, oh, yes, he married a young lady, right? Young girl. But the young girl was not forced to do so. She was of age of mature. Even though her age is not... Uh, it has already the normal age for maturity, but her mindset was already mature. Everything about her was already mature. She thinks mature because they are familiar to you know talk to her, ask for a concert. That oh, do you want to marry this man? And for her to say yes, that means she knows what it meant to marry. That means she knows what it means to get married. So he was trying to tell the man that then. It, she was not forced to do so. It was not a child abuse. That she was, she did it willingly because her parents, you know, spoke to her about it. And she, the way she spoke and react, she reacts. I'm sure she behaves more than her age. So the maturity was already there from her, her own part. You get it. So he said, when a situation like that arises, you you handle the situation quite well. Handle it well. Don't be too eager to react because the person wants to provoke you to, you know, portray your religion in a bad light, in a bad way. And don't allow it. Don't allow the person to do that. So I went to Yusuf and explained this to this man. The man was like, oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know. You could see how the man was calm enough to listen. But before they started the discussion, the guy tried to mimic, like, provoke uh, provoke Yusuf Etis again by making mention of, you know, Aisha. Then he, w he just kept quiet and he was shocked. Like, the way he just gave him an answer. And he was like, ah, I was just, you know, in that facial expression of you expecting somebody to react in an angry manner. She was just shocked. He was shocked. So, the best way to do when somebody insults you know, Prophet Muhammad insults your religion, is to try to reason the reason with the person. Some people are ignorant. I'm sure the man was ignorant of so many information. He only knew little of the information. So a lot of people are so ignorant, they don't know much. So you really want to enlighten them, educate them. 
So when a situation like that arises, just educate the person. Tell the person based on what you know and with proof. Tell the person that oh, it's a misconception. Oh, you are wrong. This is it. even though yes, what the person say is kind of right. Still try to prove to the person that oh, you are right though, but you are not totally right. It is like this. It is like this. It's like this. It's like this. Get it? So you have to just portray yourself well, portray your religion well, speak with respect, speak with wisdom, speak with you know authority, not authority like command, command. No, speak with boldness, confidence. That was a beautiful one. I really enjoyed watching you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.